I want to point this out right off the bat because I know a lot of people are going to ask this question or have probably been thinking about it. Yes, these monitors are perfect for PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series X. What's up, YouTube? Welcome to the channel. Be sure to subscribe, tap the bell. Make sure you guys are notified when I go live or post new videos. Be sure to check me out over on Spotify. My new singles are being dropped over there every month. I got a new song. Innuendo, Evo, Toto, Bizarro, Mosquito, No Migo, Jack, Harlow, Combo, Gonzo, Salvo, Fuero, Not So, Like a Fucking Soprano. Check me out on TikTok, Instagram, and Twitter. All the socials, Real Joseph Corey. And be sure to check me out over on Facebook Gaming, facebook.com forward slash Real Joseph Corey for live streams and content over there that's exclusive. Let's dive right into today's video. It is the BenQ Zowie XL2746S, which is identical to the XL2546K. Same products, just different size. Let's dive right in. Okay guys, it comes with a monitor cover your USB extension cable so you can use the hub on the monitor, the DVI cable, your video cable, power cable. This is the switch for quick control for three different settings on the monitor. This is the base of the monitor right here, as well as the neck to the monitor. I already have a BenQ Zowie 2746, and this is the S that I'm adding for dual monitors, actually, triple monitors because I have an IPS monitor as well. This right here has everything else in it. This is the instructions, which we do not need. And the monitor itself. It's pretty easy to set this thing up to, and I'm gonna show you. You don't need a screwdriver or any tools to do it. In fact, it's quite honestly the easiest monitor I've ever set up. The base goes right here. There is a self-adjusting screw right here. They give you a screw that you can adjust it as a flip tab, locks into the bottom of the neck. Uh, this is actually a much higher quality uh, stand than the one that came on my $1,300 32-inch Dell IPS video editing monitor. This monitor is higher quality than that as far as build structure. So what we're gonna do is we're going to align these tabs. You see how the the tabs are going in a circular motion. They go in here. So you're gonna take the monitor neck and you're going to put it right where the arrow meets, two red arrows, and you're just gonna turn to the left a little bit to offset it. And you see how it sits in there just nice? That we need to turn the neck of the monitor clockwise. This way it locks the bottom of these tabs. And you can see I'm doing that right now. See how it's locked in place? We're gonna go ahead and Line up this screw right here. And we're gonna lock this in place now. And that's it. We're just gonna tighten this as much as we can, push it flat, and now the monitor neck is set up perfectly. And then of course you're gonna adjust it right where you hear this click. That's dead center. Then you're gonna turn your monitor to dead center. Now the neck is perfectly straight. With this monitor specifically, you wanna slide the top in and then snap the bottom. All right, so here is the outer flap to the monitor. This thing right here helps your vision. You're playing a game like this. You could be distracted by something that's beyond the monitor. With this here, it blocks your view and it's completely black, so this way, you're more focused on the monitor. They come in this box right here, and you have to set them up. Once you unwrap them, they come with these preloaded spring screws that do not come out, and a little plastic piece that cover the Zowie logo. Just remember that the angle cut goes down. And before you can put those on the monitor, there's gonna be a little bit of tape on the top and the bottom, just like this. You remove the tape and then you remove this little rubber cover here and that's where they screw in. Very easy Phillips screw. 
I want to point this out right off the bat because I know a lot of people are going to ask this question or have probably been thinking about it. Yes, these monitors are perfect for PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series X. They will allow you to run the 120 hertz uh, in the games that do support it. No issues whatsoever. In fact, I've used the monitor to get 120 hertz on Fortnite on PS5 multiple times. Zero issues there. If you guys are playing on console, this is the monitor for you. But not only that, if you're on PC, I would say this is probably the best monitor and best bang for buck you can get. And there's multiple reasons for that. And first and foremost, this is an eSports monitor, not a 4K monitor or a high fidelity one. That's not to say that it doesn't look great, but it is a TN panel. TN panel stands for Twisted Pneumatic. And I will tell you that this panel is going to give you much better and smoother 240 hertz. Response times on a TN panel are better than IPS, LED, or LCD. Even the top end LCD and LED monitors just can't compete with TN when it comes to response time, as well as uh, motion blur, even at 240 hertz. It, it's kind of hard to explain, but when you're looking at it on screen, you will see ghost trails or ghosting even at 240 hertz when you're on an IPS or an LED monitor, whereas a TN panel, it's significantly reduced. On this TN panel, it has DIAC, which enhances and sharpens the movement and the ghosting of images to further reduce them and make them more visible and less blurry. So essentially, this monitor is gonna give you the least amount of ghosting that you could ever hope to imagine on a 240 hertz monitor. There is a trade-off. Viewing angles aren't as good. Uh, I would imagine that if you looked at them side by side, you'd be quite shocked to see how poor of a viewing angle a TN panel has to an LED monitor at times. However, most people are not gonna be standing to the side while playing a game. They're gonna be staring directly at their monitor. And for most competitive gamers, if not all of them, this is the monitor to choose. And there's a reason why all competitive gamers, well, almost all of them, have BenQ Zowie. There are other monitors out there that are great choices, but none of them can compete in the eSports like the BenQ Zowie. If you're looking for the highest fidelity, the highest graphics and 4K, you might have to look elsewhere. Most people playing on console, PS5 or Xbox Series X want 4K, but they also want high frame rate. You're not gonna be able to get both. So you have to kind of decide what direction you're going in. But for consoles, I highly recommend this monitor. And if you're PC gaming and you're competitive, this is the monitor to choose. I have two of them right now, and I'm gonna be getting a third one for over on the right side for my streams. If you're playing on a PC, which a lot of you probably are if you're looking at this monitor, there's really no need to play in 4K because over the years I've compared 4K to 1080p and on a computer, if you're running your graphics on maximum or ultimate everything and you've maxed everything out uh, in quad HD or 1080, yeah, 4K is gonna give you a slight advantage, but it already looks so good at 1080 or quad that I, I just really don't care about 4K, I care about frame rates. Frame rates are more important, especially competitive gaming. If you're not playing competitively, then you can get away with a 4K 144 Hertz monitor. Now, there's gonna be some of you that are gonna ask me, hey, what about 4K 240? Not gonna happen. In fact, the RTX 3090 Ti is only able to put out about 100 to 120 frames in 4K, and the 4090 and 4080s that are gonna be coming out are gonna be able to get maybe 144, maybe a bit more. There's no way even the RTX 4000 series graphic cards are gonna give 240 Hertz in 4K. Unfortunately, that's not happening. It's just not gonna happen because today's graphics cards are already struggling to keep up with 240 maxed out in 1080. In fact, with my 5950 Ryzen and my 3090, I can only get about 180 to 200 in Warzone in 1080p, and I don't even have the graphics all the way maxed out. So you're not gonna get 4K 240 stable in every game, even with a 4000 series card. This monitor is completely targeting esports and competitive gamers. This monitor will help you achieve better gameplay. It's not gonna make you a better player all in its own right, but it will assist. One of the things to think about is not just input lag or ping, but with this monitor specifically and a good graphics card, you're looking at something called CPU and GPU frame time. The lower your frame time, the more accurate and quicker your responses are while you're playing a competitive game. For example, if you're playing in 4K and you're playing Warzone or PUBG or Fortnite or Apex Legends or any of those games, in 4K, you're probably getting 60 to 90 frames per second and your GPU frame time is around 10 milliseconds. 
versus if you're playing in 1080p and you're getting 240 hertz or close to it, your frame time is probably around 4.5. In fact, when I play Fortnite, I get around 600 frames per second and my frame time is 1.7 milliseconds. And there's more things important than just frame rates. 240 hertz is not gonna be very helpful if your frame time is 10 milliseconds. It's gonna feel somewhat like console. Anybody who's went from console to PC gaming and felt a type of input lag on the console and feels how much faster PC is, a lot of that has to do with frame time. In fact, PlayStation 5's average frame time is around 17 to 20 milliseconds, three times higher than 240 hertz 1080p on PC. So you don't wanna be playing 4K competitively and have a frame time of north 10, 12 milliseconds. It's not gonna help you out competitively. Now, if you're playing Resident Evil in games that don't require a lot of attention and it's just story mode or enjoyment or you're just adventuring and stuff like that, you know, maybe Minecraft, that's all well and good. You could probably get away with another monitor, no problem. It's gonna go off of pretty much what you're looking for. This is the best competitive gaming monitor on the market when it comes to high frame rate and low input lag. And Diac is going to give you guys a significant advantage over non-DIAC monitors as it's going to sharpen motion blur edges and make them more visible and easier to land headshots. All right, guys, so let's go ahead and look at DIAC. You see here on the right, the DIAC is off and there's blur around the gun, the hands, the crosshair, as well as the bullet holes on the wall. And you'll see the door is all blurry over here with DIAC on all of it is removed. Now, not every situation is gonna be this perfect, but this is what DIAC does. It helps keep things sharp and remove ghosting and motion blur and sharpen the edges so you can be more accurate and you can see things more clearly. Here's another example of 144 versus 240. There's less motion blur between 144 and 240. Competitive gamers, I recommend 240 over 144 or 120 any day of the week. This is a little bit more uh, vivid details of black equalizer on or off. This is off and this is on. And this is the extreme setting going from completely off to completely on at 20. And I highly recommend setting it between five and 10, but it's gonna depend on the game you're playing. Thanks so much for watching guys, I appreciate it. Be sure to subscribe, tap the bell, comment below, give this video a thumbs up. Hope you guys enjoyed it. We'll catch you on the next upload or live stream. I'm out of here. Juice.